Hi, thanks for clicking on my video. I'm excited to show you guys this new build that I just put together. Uh, main components, what I'm gonna start off with is the i7-3570K. I got this from an old friend's build, including the uh, motherboard, heatsink, and the RAM. Uh, it was a super popular processor during its time, more than enough for pretty much any kind of gaming. And spec-wise, I thought uh, it could probably still hold up for quite a bit of gaming nowadays. That chip is installed on an ASRock uh, Fatality Edition uh, motherboard, which is pretty awesome. It's got the physical power and reset buttons there, along with a, uh, with a postcode readout. And <laughs> the best thing is it has a dedicated uh, Fatality gaming mouse port right there. <laughs> I have no idea what that's supposed to do. I guess it like has lower latency or something like that. I just thought that was kind of hilarious. Clear CMOS button as well, so it's a pretty, it's a pretty high-end motherboard. Um, along with that, this is actually a Silverstone fan. It's technically supposed to be a uh, a low-profile fan where the fan goes underneath the heatsink there, but uh, it's just being used as a normal one. I put the fan on top. That's actually an Arctic Silver fan on there right now. Uh, seems like it's doing a pretty good job. For the graphics card, this is an ASUS uh, GTX 1050 Ti. Um, the really nice thing about this is that it requires no auxiliary power because what I have for the power supply right now is this EVGA uh, 430 watt. It's 80 plus certified. EVGA usually makes uh, great power supplies. So uh, I had this lying around and I wanted to use it with a more low powered system. So I thought the 1050 Ti would, would pair perfectly with it. For storage, I got a 120 gig solid state along with a one terabyte 7200 RPM hard drive. I'll put in this case, I do not know the brand of it. Uh, it has a pretty decent configuration. It's got one 120 millimeter in the front right there and then another 120 right in the back uh, reasonably good IO I had a DVD drive I just threw in there to fill up that extra space there is barely any room in here to cable manage but I think I did a pretty decent job here it's got a uh, eight gigabytes of RAM as well and I I think that covers just about everything about the components so uh, let's see what the performance is like just got a 6605 in Firestrike. Taking a look at the monitoring here, it looks like the CPU held right around between 30 to 40 degrees Celsius under just your average gaming load, while the GPU stayed at about 60. Uh, really good temps there, I'm happy with those. Once you go over to the uh, CPU intensive part of the benchmark, CPU only has a chance to get up to about 50 and the GPU drops down to 40. So that's great, and they both get up around 50 for the combined test there. As for, uh, yeah, the GPU loads at 100% all the time, so that's good to see. And the, uh, the processor maintains, a, it gets the 3.8 gigahertz boost clock quite a few times here, probably just on one core each. And, uh, and then at the CPU intensive part, it looks like it hits about 3.6 gigahertz. So that's pretty good. Looks like it was able to pull off a 2507 in Time Spy. I'm actually really impressed with the CPU on this one. 30 FPS in the very beginning and only stopped at around 10 FPS doesn't seem like a lot, but for a CPU this old for Time Spy, worked pretty nicely. I'm gonna guess it's probably the clock frequency that's helping it there. It was able to maintain the uh, 3.6 again, even boosting up to 3.7 at the very end there. Uh, looks like it also hit the GPU a little harder in terms of uh, temperatures along with the uh, along with the CPU, but still very respectable scores out of this rig. First game I tried out was a uh, Rainbow Six Siege here on right around medium setting. Frame rates and frame times are looking good and uh, GPU usage is very close to 100%. CPU usage isn't quite all the way up to 100%. Um, once again, thermals are looking good. The VRAM is being used pretty sparingly as well as actually system memory. It seems like the 8 gigs is doing just fine if you don't have anything in the background. Next game I played was 
Shadow of the Tomb Raider, once again on about medium settings. This is where we start to see the CPU usage get even higher. We are pretty much pushing the older i5 to its limits, but we can still see that the GPU usually heads right around 100%, so if there's a bottleneck, it's minimal, but there's, there's definitely something there. VRAM is being dedicated relatively sparingly, 4 gigs is perfectly enough. Frame times are a little less even here, but this is at full 1080p, medium settings. I'm guessing if you messed around with it a little bit, you could get it running quite a bit better. Here I tried Fortnite on about medium settings. We have the CPU pretty much pegged at 100% the entire time here. Uh, GPU usage gets a little bit under 10% sometimes. We get some frame drops and frame time inconsistencies here. System memory and VRAM are fine. I'm not sure if this is the instructions per clock or if it's the uh, four cores without any hyper-threading of the i5 that's holding it back here. Got a little bit of the same story in Call of Duty Warzone. Actually, very slightly less CPU usage. Um, frame times, I'd say, are a hair more consistent. Frame rate is a bit lower, though. I think these are about low to medium settings for Call of Duty. I do not like the way they have their... Uh, their system settings laid out. It's very confusing. Otherwise, seems like a pretty playable experience. I wanted to try some of the most popular games on this to see how they'd handle, but for older games, slightly older games, I don't see this computer having too much of an issue. Thanks for watching the video. I do have an Instagram page where I post some other tech stuff once in a while. And if you liked what you saw, go ahead and subscribe. I'll be I'll be doing plenty of other builds just like this and testing them out. Thanks for watching.